the, the negative, you know, mental health ramifications that we're seeing with phones, right? We're talking about how our kids are so overstimulated, right? Like they're just, they're in this thing 24 seven, they get home at night, you know, they shut the door, you and think they're, they're asleep. And they're in said, a shell, they're disappearing into a shell. But I also think, but 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 it, it's it's also a testament to that, that quote unquote, that crack, that addiction that comes from the social media and the likes and who's mm-hmm. talking about me and who's doing what. But it's like, again, this thing has taken bullying to a different level, right? Because that embarrassing moment when maybe a young lady gets her period in, in class now ends up on somebody's mm-hmm. social media. That moment when somebody's crying or maybe the not so cool kid is getting pushed around and now it goes from being one moment in time that maybe five or ten people saw to it going viral. It's just, it, it's not healthy for so many reasons, like the least of which is them not talking to each other. You know yes. what I'm saying? Well, I don't know if that's the least of which, well, no, because I mean, that's, it's, it's, I mean, that's I people's it. skills they're going to need for the rest of their life. It is. I mean, unless everything just, unless everything just keeps working well. Um, but it was just interesting, like I said, to see how many people, you know, felt so strongly one way or the other. And there wasn't a whole lot of, again, in between, which is the other thing we talk about often uh, on this podcast. But again, somebody's like, yes, I'm all for this. Uh, it's too much of a distraction. Kids need to be focusing on their education with inter- and with interacting with the teacher, not glued to their devices. Again, somebody said, yes, but they still need to take them to school, put it away that after school they can have their phones again. Um, I disagree. Phones should not be banned from schools. My children should be able to call or text me at any time. If Lord forbid there's an emergency, I need to have access to my children at all times. Because sadly, the world is not a safe place. Now, I do agree that phones shouldn't be allowed or even visible during class, as it is a distraction. But the kids should be allowed to have them in their pockets on silent and during their breaks and lunch. I see no harm in that either. I want to control our children. You can't control strangers making their way into schools. I retract it. Absolutely not. Um, I love that there were a lot of parents pointing out, like, remember when your parents used to just call the office? Like, you know what I'm saying? If your kid is sick, they don't need to avoid the school nurse and just call you to come pick them up. You know, there was a time when you used to have to go and tell the nurse you had a stomach ache and or I don't feel good and she'd take your temperature like you're fine. You know, and, and half the time, why were you sick? Because you were being bullied. I'm because curious you how. Because uh, with your friends. Because you hadn't studied for a test. Yeah. You know, and now you just text your parent and the parents that are, are you know, hard in the paint want to be able to communicate with their kids at all times. They're coming to get you. They're snatching your happy ass right out of the head. Suck it up, buttercup. Do you really think that the world is so much worse in 2023, or do you agree with the other person who commented and said we just see it all now? We just have the world has always been a bad place. To all the information, it's always been a bad place. It's always been a bad place. There's always been, if anything, if anything, Kimmy, mm-hmm. I would say it's safer now. You know what I don't understand? I would say it's safer now because the criminals or pedophiles, or any of these people know that at any given moment, they're on camera. They don't. They and they're being watched. Doing shit. No, I mean, they're I crazy. I Florida Man story. They're crazies, <laughs> but you know, what, you know what I'm saying, though. I mean, the, the whole thing that happened here in Hollywood with Adam Walsh. Nobody knew shit. Mm-hmm. Nobody, you know, nobody saw anything. Nobody knew nothing. Yeah. I, I can't say that it that it deters people because there was just a situation, um, I want to say in Miami Gardens or maybe in Liberty City, where a man tried to abduct a young girl and she bit him. I don't know if you saw that on the news. Mm-hmm. She literally just far down bit his hand or whatever, and he dropped her and he ran. And it's the scariest thing to watch this whole situation unfold on ring cameras from the neighborhood. And this is, I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't a, a gated community type of situation, mm-hmm. but clearly people, you know, are, are protecting their homes. And to watch him like lurking and stalking and he was in a Range Rover. He was in a, a nice vehicle and he mm-hmm. was really just trying to do like a snatch and, like a snatch and grab and go. And luckily her mother had taught her, you fight until you can't fight anymore. Mm-hmm. And she was, you know, maybe I think somewhere between four and six years old and just bit him and he dropped her and he ran and he got in the car. And thankfully again, like ring cameras and CCTV were able mm-hmm. to identify the vehicle and they got, they caught him, which is fantastic. But unfortunately, it's still not as much as a deterrent of a deterrent mm-hmm. as we would love. 
So these are people who grew up being able to ride their bike. Like my homeboy posted a meme the other day and he said, I don't think our parents realized just how far we went when we rode our bikes in the 80s. <laughs> I, and I died because I was like, no because we'd be gone all day. <laughs> all day. Yeah, I know. But I grew up like that. I don't understand why parents don't allow their children because to the, do those things Because now. the parents have been put in a perpetual state of fear because they see out of the 330 million people in this country and the 7 billion people in this world, everything bad that happens and nothing good. I understand yeah. that the woman who, who wants her kid, if, if her child is being bullied, right, she wants her child to be able to communicate with her immediately mm -hmm. because she has personal experience with that, right? But having dealt with that personal experience, wouldn't you want to teach your child to advocate for themselves? If you know what happened to you, right? Like, wouldn't you say, listen to me. Like, this is what I want you to do. Not only are you going to call me, but I also want you to go to the teacher and I want you to demand to go to the principal and you're going to, you know, you're going to document all of these things. Like, it just, instead of, instead of empowering her child, it almost seems like she's, she's trying sheltering to and shelter and protect. And you can't, like you said, Len, you, these are things that are going to handicap you in the in real the world. Long run, yeah. In the real world, when you get out there, because what are you going to do the day, the first time your your boss says something, you know, out of pocket to you, you're going to text your mom? <laughs> is she coming to, you know, is she coming down to, to Morgan Stanley or whatever, Lehman, like, you know, I don't even know if these things exist, but you know what I'm talking about. Bank of America, or is she coming down to the man tip up? Like, I wish. What would you do if somebody's mother came and knocking on this back door yeah, here? Yeah, well, you know. Like, do you know what I'm saying? No, like, and that's, you wonder why you have kids who are like, oh, you can't talk to me. And, and I get that yeah. we have to have boundaries, and I'm all for, you know. Listen, I've interviewed a hundred of them. A hundred of them. Yeah. You can't work here. You can't work here. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's that simple. No, like, my, my mom is an incredible mother, right? Like, a, a, amazing. And has always been my rock. But she, I think, the, the, the greatest thing she ever did for me was she listened. She allows me, I think, and that's given me the ability to kind of work through some of my stuff. I think with just having a sounding board, right? Like, when you can talk it through, you realize this is not the end of the world, right? Like, somebody doesn't like you. You're fighting with this one. They're being mean. They ganged up on you. Like, you know, that that happens in girl squads all the time. Like, it's unfortunate, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. Then you guys make up. Like, you know, she used to laugh. She'd be like, oh, you're fighting. I thought you guys were in a fight. Well, can someone still sleep over? You know what I mean? Like, I mm -hmm. you guys were fi weren't you fighting yesterday? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's life as kids. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn to work through those things and to communicate and have tough conversations. So and we, I'm we grateful have it. for her for that. We have it between Joey and Miranda all the time. We have to constantly tell them because they'll rip each other apart. To their friends, they'll rip the other one apart. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hello, that's your sister. That's your brother. Mm -hmm. What's the matter with you? You know? <laughs> and it's, but it's true. It's, that's, that's the nature of being a teenager. And, and you know, a pre-teenager, you have to find your own way. But it's also, like, it teaches you, like, I think, teaches you resilience to some degree yeah. too it's kind of like you know picking your skin and, and again it's you, you know you have like and you've probably been around it. i know i have i have friends that are incredible at roasting each other incredible it's but it's it's culturally something that they just do like you grow up with that from when you're little and mm -hmm. it, it becomes a skill and they're so quick with the comebacks you know what i mean and if you're not you will get annihilated like don't step into the the your mama jokes don't step mm -hmm. into the don't do it to yourself if you are not ready to bring the smoke, right? But it's funny because when you're around that, you learn to be self-deprecating, right? Like, I have a big head, so I can crack the big head joke. Like, you know what I mean? And it doesn't phase me if somebody else points it out. Like, I can talk about how hairy I was, right? Like, I mean, I can do those things. I can, when you can, when you can own the things that you're most vulnerable about, mm -hmm. when you can own the, the, the weakest parts of your character, or your flaws, or, or things like that, that is such a, it's like a superpower. 